What's up guys, this is Lorelai and this is my first YouTube video. So since YouTube is still a very new territory for me, um, I'll start my first video or the first videos that I'll be shooting. They will be about social marketing, Instagram, how to grow your Instagram, how to grow your online business, your blog, and of course, positive mindset because, you know, you can get away with negative mindset. <laughs> What could be a little discouraging is when you look at Instagram, the most followed people are people like Selena Gomez and um, uh, who else? Uh, all these modern singers and the pop stars and, um, you know, A-list celebrities. And you may actually think that, you know, I'm not a model, I'm not a celebrity, I will never have 10 million people following me. And that's right, you will never have 10 million people following you. However, you can take your account from, let's say, 100 followers or 1,000 followers to 1,000 followers or 10,000 followers. And this is an absolutely realistic goal. Um, you don't have to be A-list influencer to be successful. You can, have, you, can, you can start small and you can grow. That's the, that's the beauty of it there is a potential to grow. Maybe you've seen many people on YouTube and on Instagram talking about their Instagram secrets and their tips on how to grow and how to become an influencer. And you maybe tried their strategies, but they never worked. I'm not saying that they are not relevant. However, you have to realize that um, Instagram constantly changes its algorithm. If you try to get online a few years ago and if you're trying it now, these are just completely different algorithms. The way that Instagram rates photos and displays them to your subscribers are completely, you know, there is a, just a different mechanism behind this whole thing. So many things need to be taken into account. Also, the level is constantly growing. What was in a few years ago is, you know, is actually out of fashion today. We, we've had, you know, moments where bleached white profiles were extremely popular today. They are not popular anymore. Then they came, they came, then came the flat lays, then came other things. Now the photos are taken, the, what, what's in right now are photos that are in neutral brownish tones filled with details. This, these are the photos that get the most likes, the most, you know, they are shared and saved. So you really have to stay, you know, on top of the game if you want to win this game. Now, the first tip is obviously the most obvious one, but this needs to be said, don't post photos on the go. Don't just take a photo of your coffee and post it on Instagram because you're in a rush. You don't have the time to look at the photo. If the exposure is good enough, if the colors match the rest of your feed and you will just end up with an unprofessional photo that you will be removing afterwards. Trust me, this is what I did when I decided to take my Instagram account to a more professional level. I just started by removing all the crap photos that I had there and I've had like hundreds of them. So take your photos wherever you are, when you're traveling, when you're eating, take your photos. And when you're home, when you have the time, sit down, go through them, adjust them, make sure you pick only the best photos from what you've had and then upload them. Make sure you adjust the colors to match the rest of your feed so that no, no, uh, so that your photo won't stand out from the rest of your feed. Tip number two is another no-brainer and this is light. I know that if you're taking photos um, at the party, in a bar, it's very hard to have good lighting conditions. We all know that. However, try to make photos outdoors as much as possible or if you're shooting indoors um, take a source of light you know some kind of lamp and try to shoot it if, if it's not you know a spontaneous shot just take um, advantage of every light in the room that you can to aim at the person you're shooting or at the object that you're taking a photo of um, it's very important because uh, outdoor light is very yellow you get that a natural yellow tone you get tons of noise regardless of the camera you're using and you just get an overall very bad unprofessional quality. Uh, needless to say that these photos are very hard to work with. They're impossible to, to edit because, you know, the noise is just gets on the way. Um, so just make sure light works for you and not against Tip you. Tip number three is something that, again, I'm sure many of you are already familiar and it's about using filters. Um, 
using the same filter for all your photos makes your feed look much more professional, much more consistent, much more beautiful when you look at it you know, as a whole. Because when someone enters your profile for the first time, they look at your pictures as a whole. They don't just look at every picture individually. And if they all match and look, and if that profile looks put together and the photos match each other color-wise, your profile will score. And uh, another thing uh, about the filters is, of course, you have filters inbuilt in the Instagram app. However, I personally feel that they have been used so much and by so many people for so many years that people already know these filters and they are not just, um, they're just too obvious. Uh, on the other hand, there are tons of free apps out there that offer tons of filters. I'll list them all down below in the description. You can download them and you know, process your photo in that app prior to uploading it to Instagram. And this will make your photo actually stand out, shouldn't be edited too much, you know, don't go crazy with the filters and light leaks and noise and all these kind of things that are in right now. Um, but make sure all your photos are consistent in their colors, in their editing style. Next, we have the hashtags, you know, you can go without them. And again, if you take the, the example of the coffee, which we talked about before, I've seen so many people, myself included, that post you know, a snapshot of their coffee and use the hashtag coffee, and that's it. And literally, just visit the hashtag and you'll see that there are 200 millions of photos posted under that hashtag. So your photo, assuming it's not a masterpiece, which we both know it's not, will sink down in half a second in that feed because so many new photos are added every single, you know, not a minute, every single second. So you have no way of standing out. Instead, what I'm suggesting is to use less popular hashtag, hashtags. Um, I use the app Focalated. Um, I'm not sure about the name. I'll list it down below anyway, uh, which generates hashtags for every, you know, theme. Instagram allows up to 30 hashtags per photo. However, don't use all the 30 uh, because then Instagram's algorithm will decide that you are spamming and will block your photo from showing up. So use about 20. I think from my personal experience, 20 is enough to cover the subject. And I use that app to generate hashtags in my niche. And then I just add them with those five dots to make sure that the hashtags don't show up in the description and don't look like a spammy photo. Another thing is tagging. You've probably seen a lot of influencers recently tagging their photo. Uh, by tagging, I mean that if you look at their photo and then you just you know click on it, um, you'll have 10,000 bubbles popping out, um, indicating what shirt are they wearing and what shoes they have and what coffee table is out there on the background. Um, the only reason why they do it is because once you tag yourself in a certain photo, that photo will be displayed in the feed of that brand. So for example, if you take, you know, if you have a Zara coat and you tag it, someone who visits Zara and looks at, um, at products and people who were tagged with Zara product, your photo will be displayed there. So this is another way of getting into, you know, a certain feed or a certain brand feed. Next, we cannot neglect Instagram's uh, algorithm, which has changed, like I said, uh, dramatically over the past years, and it has changed a lot even now in 2019. Um, today, if you want to make sure that your photos are displayed to your subscribers and that they gain the exposure that they deserve, you have to use Instagram actively. And by actively, Instagram assumes that you will be posting stories, that you will be, display uh, that you will be uh, replying to comments, that you will be posting comments on other photos, you'll be tagging people, you'll be uh, You'll be going live, you'll post stories, and you actually, you actually, I'm not even talking about the Instagram TV, which I hate, and I hope they will shut down this future. But anyway, it's there right now, and Instagram assumes that if you use up all their channels of social interaction, you are an active user and your photos deserve exposure. Obviously, this is not fair, because for me personally, I don't want to go live, I don't have the time, I don't want to post on uh, Instagram TV, and I don't always have time for stories or even replying to comments or posting comments on other photos. I just, you know, like them if I, if I like them or if I just save them. However, you have to be active in order to, you know, get out there. You have to hustle. That's, that's basically about it. So um, make sure you reply to comments and you reply to comments as fast as possible. Instagram normally gives you about half an hour. If you don't reply in half an hour, you're not active. If your photo doesn't get enough comments, in the first half an hour, it's not a good enough photo. So 
just uh, study the Instagram's algorithm, the current Instagram's algorithm, and make sure you make use of the current strategy as much as possible. Lastly, and this is the most critical point, photos of what should you be taking. And this is a mistake that I was making for years when I was running my Instagram account, although I actually didn't try to make it professional, but when I was looking back, I realized that that was the problem. Um, I was taking photos of my surroundings. I loved macro photography, and I was taking lots of macro shots. And it's not like they were not good shots. They were high quality, they were interesting. There was like an inside of a flower. However, no one is interested at looking at this flower. No one wants to look at this bag. Bug. How do I say bug? I don't know. Anyway, um, no one is interested to look at that. No one is interested to look at a cup of coffee standing on the coffee table. No one is interested to look at the landscape. You know, even if it's a good landscape, we've seen so much of them. We are oversaturated with content. We've consumed all the content in the world. We've had we've seen everything right now when if you are on internet on social media you've seen everything you know you are very hard to surprise so if you take a photo and you want to surprise your audience you have to take a photo of something that is either really easy to understand like a motivational quote or a meme or something like you know a joke or um you know something really really you know like a basic level an entry level content or that content should be so professional, so high quality that you actually surprise your audience with it. You know, a photo that is filled with details, that is interesting, that it has such a cinematic color scheme that you just, you know, get the atmosphere just by looking at the photo. So um, it's really hard. If you're not a professional photographer, it's very hard to find that balance and, you know, make a good photo. So the, what I've seen, from what I've seen and from what I've learned, um, taking a photo of yourself in some kind of context context is a lot better than taking just a plain photo of something. For example, I wouldn't take, right now, I wouldn't take a coffee shot, like, you know, shooting my cup, my cup of coffee. I'll take uh, a photo of myself drinking that coffee. I know this is more complicated. You have to ask someone to make a photo of you or carry um, a selfie stick or a tripod around. This is more complicated, but you do take your photos to a whole new level. You make your photos more interesting. A photo of you doing something interesting is always a lot more better than something interesting on itself or you on itself. Uh, again, don't take just plain selfies in a bathroom or anywhere else. This is boring. You know, this is just like it, it was good five years ago, but it's not good anymore. So. For me, uh, from what I've seen, just taking a picture of you doing something, the more interesting, the better. You know, you being in some kind of interesting environment is the best, is the best uh, ground for creating, you know, personal, professional photos. With that being said, of course, there are many factors to Instagram success. Photos don't go viral just by themselves. Um, it doesn't just happen. There is a strategy behind it. You have to realize that people are paid for internet marketing, for Instagram marketing. People are paid actually a lot of money for doing this. So you cannot expect to do everything by yourself and do have realistic expectations of your photos. However, and the tips of course that I'm talked about are not, are not, there's not everything. There are a whole, there's like tons of other factors to this. However, the tips that I've covered in this video um, are enough to kick you off the ground, to take your photos from, you know, a boring, personal level to a professional looking feed, you know, to make your Instagram more appealing, more interesting, to get you more likes, more followers organically. Of course, you can buy followers and you can buy likes and contrary to common belief, you will not be banned if you do it wisely. However, no matter what the suppliers are promising you, there are always dead accounts. You, you will never get any interactions from those. And they're always from one country. So if someone checks your, um, your followers, which you can do using external applications, um, they will see that you have like 99% of your followers from a different country, which is not even your country. It's like a country in, you know, far east country. So um, don't do this. You have to grow organically. And believe me, the satisfaction from grow growing organically will be so much better and so much worth it as opposed to just seeing a bigger number near your name. So I hope this video was helpful and do bear with me because this is my first YouTube video. I'll, I hope to improve my quality of recording, lightning and everything else, you know, as I go along. However, I hope that for now it was good enough and I hope that, you know, just subscribe, just please subscribe because I don't have any subscribers. See you soon.